Good morning and welcome. Welcome back to this final day on session eight of the business content at the 60th Monte Carlo Television Festival, coming to you live from the Principality of Monaco. We've been bringing you a hybrid format, both in person and online, with our virtual participants and speaker, speakers joining us on Zoom this week. The festival biz content includes an exceptional lineup of legendary showrunners, international producers and actors, and industry executives who are and have been collectively shaping the future of television. Today we still have two sessions lined up for you. We've just done a producer's virtual one-on-one -on -one, and um, our next session and live from Monte Carlo will be a candid reflection with Chequi Cario, who is this year's Monte Carlo Television Festival Crystal Nymph Honorary. So um, and following that, uh, we will be uh, presenting you a great CEO conversation with Anna Marsh, who is the CEO, of course, of Studio Canal. So stay with us for that. So um, we are going to be kicking off in just a few minutes. And um, obviously, this week has been um, a way for the business people to come together, address uh, all the things around international content creation, production, international co-production, of course, here at the Monte Carlo Television Festival, the shift in digital, and of course, the continuing impact of the pandemic. We're looking forward to our expert panelists sharing their insight with you throughout this morning. And of course, we've seen that this week. Just, we have a few people joining us on Zoom. So just a few housekeeping notes. Um, if you do want to uh, reach out to us, ask a question, please feel free to go in the chat box and just let us know where you're from. Um, say hi to Checky. And then also, if you have any questions, please add these to the Q&A. Um, you will find this in the toolbar at the bottom of your um, chat box at the bottom of your toolbar. We also have some social media for anybody who's with us in the room today. Nice to see you all. And also on um, Zoom, please feel free. It's hashtag Festival Biz Content. And we have Twitter, LinkedIn, and all those social media for you to share with us on. So I think that's um, about all from me. Um, I'm going to just hand you over to our fantastic moderator, Rebecca Leffler, who is an American author and journalist based in Paris. And she has also been a correspondent of The Hollywood Reporter and film critic on Canal Plus and France 24. Um, she has published books, five books. She's also been involved in Emily in Paris. And she continues to write and produce content for media outlets and brands in France and in the US. So we're just going to have a quick short clip. I'll hand you over to Rebecca, who will start the conversation with Checky Cario. Thank you. Bonjour. Hello. Hello. <coughs> Actually, I don't even know what language to speak, and it's very hard to describe you to an audience because you are so international yourself. Also, all the projects you've done have been so varied. I think the only way I'd describe you might be an international star. Um, how would you describe yourself and, and your profession? Uh, hello. Uh everyone <laughs> i'm speaking english also because yes. maybe there i'm sure there is french people but uh for those who don't speak french uh and i ho hopefully the french speaks english <laughs> i guess there is more french speaking english than the english speaking french only you and you maybe it's true yeah so how would i describe um myself uh, uh being candid Candid, actually, it, it's like a wrong friend I in French, you know, because mm -hmm. candid is uh, maybe uh, it's very genuine, you know, like a child. In fact, it means uh, I was just looking in the dictionary. It means what to be authentic and uh, true. Yeah. <coughs> well, I'm trying. I will try. <laughs> <laughs> so um, how would I describe uh, myself? Uh, as an actor, you mean, uh, you know, I, I was born in a melting pot and uh, I've always, I never wanted to be uh, stuck in a chapel, 
Can I say that in English? Stuck in, in a, a in a in a yeah in a box or uh, you know we say in French in a, a chapel is a is mm -hmm. the like a church you know where uh, only that one. I, I am a man from many church, many uh, faith you know, and um, so that's why I like to uh, walk and uh, try to meet different people. As I told you, my mother always told me, uh, uh, "Go, go, uh, look uh, over there and see if I'm if I'm there. Get away from 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 here." And I thought, "Well, I'm going to go there to see if I'm there." So that's what I I guess I did uh, through all those years uh, as an actor when I uh, made uh, that choice because it was a it was a choice. I was kind of taken by the color, but uh, I made the choice, you know. And you also are in mu into music as well. You have another parallel musical career. Can you tell us about that? Well, I started um, quite uh, late to do music when I was when I turned 50. Uh, I thought I never thought about uh, how old I, I am. You know, never thought about that. Never thought about death. I felt like I'm uh, forever. You know, <laughs> but when I turned 50, I, it was the the moment where I, I realized I'm. Growing, and I turned, looked at the road, and thought, "Well, this happened. What, what's left, you know?" And uh, I was in America uh, since uh, quite a while, shooting around the world from uh, America, and I thought, "I'm going to go and back to to Paris." I always lived in Paris, actually. I never became a, a resident, but I thought, "I'm going to do music." It was a dream for a long time. I always carried my guitar and I, I decided to meet with musicians and, uh, uh, and uh, discuss with the instrument with, with them and uh, make music and put to together a band and uh, use also myself as an actor to say uh, words with the music. It's not music to go on top of the table and uh, dance, you know. It's, um, you can dance eventually inside deep inside <laughs> but um, it's like a show it's the the i i would say the when if i propose a, a song i play with the guys and the we share and they bring their history as musicians so uh, it becomes uh, something original you know it's the it's the face of the people who are there and uh, it becomes like almost a little uh, uh, movie every song uh, because it's full of uh, different, uh, you know, uh, s through a song you can, it can rain uh, deeply, it can, uh, uh, thunders can come and uh, very sweet and nice moment in one song, you know. So um, that's what I'm doing. Ah, oh, sorry. Merde, pourtant je l'ai coupé. I cut it. <laughs> um, you see, music is coming. What was it? <laughs> it was Bec uh, it's because timing. I'm moving my, my watch. Uh, something was pushed and it was Piano Concerto Shostakovich. Perfect. <laughs> so now you have one of the colors. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> well. But actually, I'm not even sure how you have time to do all the music because I feel like you're always shooting something. You've been in so many movies and TV shows, big and small screens. Um, the line today is kind of blurred between TV, film, you know, all this content here. It's a television festival, but what is television today? It's a mix of film and you have stars from movies coming. So when you approach your characters in these different formats, is it the way you approach it differently? Um, knowing that, you know, someone like uh, your character in The Missing and Baptiste, you're, it's the same character over a long period of time. You have more development versus a feature film. Um, well, I, it's the same for me, feature or uh, uh, being on a series or for, for TV, it's the same. Uh, it's just that, yes, I, I take more time to prepare a series. I have more uh, space, more uh, opportunities to uh, play with uh, my skills. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's at the bit, when I started, I was afraid because uh, I, especially when I started, it was with the missing and I was afraid like being stuck for six months uh, to sign for three years. I felt I'm going, I, I won't be able to do something else. I will be stuck with that thing, you know, so it made me feel bad. But uh, what, what made me go for it, it was the memory of the meeting with the director, Tom Shankland, and, uh, and the people around. And I felt uh, I'm going to have a great uh, adventure with those people. 
uh, it will be a real, uh, a real uh, uh, experience as a human. My daughter, who just arrived, she's yeah. there. Uh, was born when I started the missing, and I was uh, kind of uh, feeling bad uh, to to go and play a guy who's looking for a, a, ch uh, uh, um, a child who disappeared. You know, who was oh, yeah. uh, uh, so. Uh, it was a confusion, you know, anxiety. But then when I realized this guy is so talented, Tom Shankland, he did The Serpent. Uh, the, the writers, two brothers, genuine and very talented. Um, so I decided to go. And it was since almost 10 years uh, I'm working cool. with them. So uh, I guess it will be a, a, a farewell. And we will go for other things. But it was fantastic to that experience. Um, you know, it's one of the best, I would say. Do I answer the question? Yes, yes. definitely. So what, um, well, actually, speaking of this character, what is it like to play? I would assume this is the longest you've ever played yeah. one character. And yeah. it's switching. It's not just this. It's the same character, but in two different shows. Batiste is a spin-off of yeah. The Missing. So is it different shooting this show versus the other show? Do you approach? It's the same character. So it is, is it it's the same uh, DNA. Uh, it's just that, uh, you know, they didn't want to go for a third missing. We, we were really high with the second season of The Missing, which was really uh, uh, incredible. And they decided they would stop. But uh, after uh, a year, uh, they called me, uh, you know, they were uh, uh, releasing The Relic, uh, Fleabag, uh, uh, Liar, you know, and uh, all those series uh, and, and they are wor were working on. And they called, they said, every time we meet uh, people, journalists, they uh, ask, uh, how about a Baptist? Where, where is he? We need him. Why don't you call him to uh, resolve the, <laughs> the cases? Because it's always about some, you know, investigation and thrillers. So they called and said, look, we are thinking of doing a spin-off. Would you go for it? I said, yes. You know, I mean, that feeling of being taken by the arms by this uh, Anglo-Saxon uh, uh, audience. And uh, this team was uh, kind of, uh, you know, love, love, you know, and affection, tenderness. So uh, I said, yes. And we, it's the same DNA, but it goes a lot through how this guy and this uh, uh, um, life he has with this family, uh, the, the daughter, his wife, how to deal with this passion and the uh, different kind of addiction. And uh, he's like a coryphe because the, every show is a, an ensemble. It's um, um, uh, every character has a strong destiny. You really get the, the chance to uh, uh, um, uh, be very uh, uh, active and complete partner of uh, the investigator meeting all those people. And a lot of humor. It's tragic comedy because uh, I, I always, that's why also I was attracted because I always thought life is not comedy, not tragedy. Mm -hmm. It's a tragic comedy, you know, on the border of death, you can laugh. You can have, a, a, you know, be surprised by uh, by uh, the fact that you can still laugh. You know, five minutes before mm -hmm. death, he was or she was still alive. You know, so uh, that's why uh, the humor is so important. Also, there. Yeah. No, I think I think the best shows are those that can make you feel many emotions and sometimes at the same time. Yeah. Um, so actually, what you've inspired so many other people in their careers and you've done so much who inspires you what tv are you watching any shows or any directors that you're any actors that inspire you i grew up with the black and white uh, movies french black and white movies american also a lot of uh, <laughs> uh, horses and uh, cowboys uh, indians mm. uh, on, on tv when i was a child i was dreaming to be on a horse uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, some French actors, uh, mm -hmm. Michel Simon, uh, uh, Carrette, uh, oh, uh, pff, Jouvet, uh, uh, singers also, uh, Jacques Brel, uh, Edith Piaf. Uh, at, uh, you know, I'm from the 50s. So, uh, <laughs> but then later it was the R&B for the music. Uh, um, uh, Aretha Franklin, uh, Nina Simon, uh, James Brown, all those people. Um, actors, Brando, uh, James Dean, you know, uh, then De Niro. I was very attracted by the this uh, uh, actor studio uh, uh, kind of uh, approach. 
this was interesting, but I also uh, developed myself uh, as an actor in the theater a lot. So uh, I, uh, I have an approach that is not just for movies, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, my, uh, I love the Commedia dell'arte, the pantomime, mm -hmm. the telling stories. So that's why I'm always interesting by different uh, forms in movies. I could, I worked in a movie, I don't know, in France, it was quite special called The Doberman. It's mm -hmm. very expressionist. It's almost um, a cartoon kind of, but wild for uh, adult. And there, you know, uh, at the beginning, I uh, had some words to say, which were weird. But when I realized the form the director was going through, I said, uh, I go for it. He's, he will assume for me. And uh, so, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, you've been in this industry for, you said it, not me, a long time. Um, how has the, the TV landscape has changed since you began? I mean, before it was TV series, we would watch one episode, wait a week, watch another on network TV, and now you're making things that are on all across platforms and different formats. Does this affect your work um, in terms of how it's shot, in terms of, you know, now a show like Baptiste is very international, whereas before I think you'd be stuck maybe shooting in one location. So how, has, how have things changed for you? Uh, it, it's uh, the, it doesn't change, uh, you know, when you are in front of a camera with somebody behind, it's the same thing. But uh, what changes, it's the uh, business model. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's the economy around the logistic. So uh, it means that we have to, to be really prepared ahead, a lot of work uh, ahead. Like when you come on and, and talk a lot with the director and the people try to meet with the actors to be uh, completely ready yeah. to arrive on stage and forget about it and uh, try to invent the moment, but with the roots and the ground of the preparation, which is quite important. So there's a lot of, of work uh, up front, ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Ahead of time, yeah. Ahead so, time. what um, what is this? Pa it's been a very strange year for the world, and especially in terms of production. How did that? How, how was it for you? Were you making things? Were you in front of the camera? Were you at home watching TV series from your couch? What, what was it like for you? Um, uh, you know, we were shooting uh, Baptiste, and um, uh, the 16th of March, 2020, suddenly I was preparing myself for the week, and the, the producer came and said, Cheki, Hungary is closing the border, France will lock down, England will lock down, uh, we have to go. <laughs> so, from one second to the other, we, ha we packed, and then the 17th of March, I was in, in France with my family, locked down in, in the house. And uh, we were kind of lucky because we had space, you know, and uh, so uh, it was a great opportunity to uh, to be together with the children. We had to do school at home. I was cooking and developing things to make them taste uh, different spices, some that I was bringing from Hungary. So it was a, quite a great moment to also take time with uh, Valérie, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, my wife, my spouse, my companion. <laughs> uh, so it was really fantastic, really uh, good. And then we started to do with, my, with the band. Uh, suddenly somebody asked, can you give a song for that uh, 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 association for those guys? And uh, I said, okay. So I called the guy, I sent uh, uh, a demo and uh, through this. And then uh, every, the, the piano started to play uh, something uh, on top of it, then the bass and drums, then the guitar. Then we've put together everything. Then they did a PBO, then they sent it to me. And we, everyone was in his place and everything through uh, the net. And I sang in my studio on top and then we mixed and then we send it. Then we did a song, comes out like one here, one here. Um, yeah, and uh, it was great moment. Um, I was just uh, hoping that uh, the, the show Baptiste won't stop uh, and that they would find uh, a way uh, to, to get back uh, on it. And, and uh, so the production decided that everything will be shot in England, not to have to go back to Hungary. So we did all the interiors there for two months. And then we had a week 
back in, in Hungary and they found a way to, uh, to, uh, to give the insurance. It was the beginning of what kind of protocol, how do we do, how do we make, uh, we feel the, the investors uh, secure uh, with this uh, COVID uh, situation. So everyone was very careful. You know, I never got it. I was tested three times a week. Uh, when I arrived in England, 15 days, 15 days in a, in a place, they gave me food through the door. <laughs> so <laughs> It's like an episode. It all sounds like an episode of Baptiste that you're describing. You know, we had yeah, to yeah. flee and then kind we of, were stuck yeah. in a room. And yeah, <laughs> maybe, the next, maybe the next season. Um, and this isn't your first time in Monte Carlo for the festival. You've been here. You've been on the jury. Yeah. You've, but this is your, the award that you're receiving. I mean, it's not your first either. But what does this award mean to you? And it, is it strange to look back at your whole body of work and your whole career? It's it, I, really it's strange uh, when they called and said, would you accept to get that? I was surprised. I, I felt, wow, wow. It's, it was, come on, the flatter, flattering. Flattering. Yeah. yeah, flattering. But at the same time, I felt like a, oh, a weight on my back. <laughs> I said, oh, shit, what, what does it mean, you know? And, uh, but it was asked uh, in such a gentle and genuine uh, way. I thought, you know, I love to give, uh, do gifts, you know, but, you know, I know also that we have to learn how to receive something. It's, it's nice to give, but it's also nice to learn how to receive. So um, uh, I, I thought it's an op opportunity to to uh, look back and uh, I feel like a young guy, you know, but yeah. uh, but um, I thought when I meet young people, they remind me uh, I'm like uh, when they say to me, oh, my grandmother loves you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I realize uh, I will turn 70 uh, soon, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I don't feel uh, at all yeah. that, you know. So, um, but I thought uh, it's a reality. So I realized maybe it's an opportunity to think how, uh, what, what will, because you know, as actors, we always play where at, in the moment, you know, we are in the moment. So what does it mean, the man I became? What do I, re what do I understand from the path I went through? So I'm trying to, to project uh, uh, um, characters, that would have to deal with their death, that would have to deal with a younger generation. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's a lot of, uh, there is a lot of interest to develop uh, uh, stories around those uh, themes uh, to, to share with the, with the audience. I remember, as I told you, uh, I was taking lessons with a jazz guy who was 60, uh, and he was bitching uh, against the young musicians. Uh, with the electronic, with the hip hop, with the fusion, with this and that. And after a while, I said, oh, "Stop, stop! Uh, you talk like the guy you were fighting against when you were 20 years old. We live at the same times uh, of those guys. We, we have to share. M maybe they have more experience because they have our experience and their experience. So we have to go and share those moments." Uh, so I thought well, this guy would be interesting to portray, you know. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's uh, the, 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 that's what I went through when the, they say uh, crystal nymph. So it was ping in my ear. <laughs> crystal, amazing. Um, one more question, and then we'll take all of your audience questions. So you've. You were mentioning that Baptiste for you has been kind of a dream role. You've enjoyed it. You've played so many different characters over the years. What is there anything, anyone you haven't played? Do you have, if you had to create your dream production, what kind of role would you dream of playing? Mm. What I just described, you know, to, to uh, I mean, I, uh, you know, as I say, I'm, I'm, I, I, I will always play with who I am now, and I would love to to find or develop uh, uh, characters uh, being in that situation I, I just uh, described. But, you know, I, there is also on theater some roles I would love to play, like a King Lear, you know, even though I'm not English, I may do it in French. But, you know, there is uh, some characters in the, the classical theater that I like. 
uh, also Richard the Third, you know, the <laughs> weird guy. Um, yeah. Bartleby, I thought he's an interesting character. Uh, talking about only English. Uh. <laughs> so you'll be very busy. Yeah, I will. <laughs> you still are. And where can we see you? What are you working on now? Um, now I'm preparing a, 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 a series with TF1 uh, International called uh, Les Combattantes. Uh, yeah, and I have other projects uh, coming up. And um, yeah. Wonderful. Well, merci thank you very beaucoup. much. Well, do you guys have any questions? Thank you. Are there any from Zoom? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Just choose one and choose one. Okay. Um, Techie, we're talking about uh, looking behind into your career that you, when you learned about the crystal nymph, right? And I don't know if you had time to think about it, but what would you believe to be your legacy to the new generation generation of actors? Mm. And what advice would you give to the new generation of actors today in the industry? Uh, you know, uh, always when I meet young guys uh, who want to become actors and uh, uh, I want to be an actor, I want to do this. Uh, I always think, uh, just don't think to be a star. Just don't think to be uh, uh, there. Just uh, go through what, what is the urgency. That's what I, 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 um, I can tell them. Um, why, you know? And um, um, yes, because uh, I think uh, uh, when you are an actor, it means it, need, it, it needs to 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 come from far, you know. And um, if you just think to to be a star, there is no interest, you know. Uh, that's what I would say, and that could be uh, what legacy, what means the heritage, legacy. Yeah. What you'll leave behind. Yeah, 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 that's it. And uh, have fun. Don't look uh, the end of the road, uh, just enjoy uh, every second of, the, of that road. You know, it's like walking in the nature in the mountain, you know, there is so many different uh, things. You can drink, uh, heal yourself, uh, eat, <laughs> enjoy, smell. Um, I guess that's yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. We have one question from, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, I apologize, Donald O'Donoghue. Um, how has the role of Julianne Baptiste changed your career and perhaps your life? Uh, well, it was the character that uh, made me question myself mm. because the guys uh, started to, to think uh, of Cheki for Julianne, you know, and um, uh, that's uh, th that's how it started to question myself, you know, uh, uh, and go uh, through my daily life, give where I am, who I am, try to listen to uh, to that body, you know, and uh, yeah. And after playing the same character for so long, is it hard for you at the end of the day or even at the end of the season to step out of the role and to be Checky and not to be Julien Baptiste? Uh, no, it's not, it's not difficult. Uh, it, but it was not easy to get back in it uh, when we stopped because we were mm. cut uh, in the air, flying and boom, <laughs> then down. So uh, six months went through, seven months went through. Uh, it, it took time to uh, to get back in it. It was strange. It was like ah, oh, you know, it's like you have to pull it again. But then, phew, eventually, uh, we we made it uh, work quite well. And you're back to Czechy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we're glad to have you back. Thank you so much. Thank that was you. really fascinating. And where Thank are you, you from, all, all of you? Uh, where, where are you from? You? Brazil, but I'm living in Morocco. Okay. And uh, are you uh, in the business? What is your occupation? <laughs> Okay, and you? I'm from Germany, I'm a filmmaker. Filmmaker, okay. Oh. You too, uh, you were? No, I'm a lawyer. A lawyer, <laughs> ah, <laughs> not that's, far, that's not actually far from the most filmmaker. Interesting here, yeah. And, yeah. Every, uh, and you? I'm a student. Student? Uh, what do you stu study? Business. Business, oh yeah, <laughs> business <laughs> content. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, yeah, yeah. Okay, everyone wants to say where are you, what do you do? Yeah, I'm French, but I live in uh, Worms. 
And what do you do? I'm working in the event industry. Ah, okay. You are all from the business uh, industry. Okay, welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank here you so today. much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Chucky. Very uh, inspiring. Thank you to everybody for joining us today in person on Zoom. Thank you, Rebecca. That was a lovely thank conversation you, thank you so to much. hear about the man himself. So stay with us. Um, we're going to be uh, welcoming Anna Marsh, CEO of Studio Canal, in just a few minutes. Thank you. Different topic thing.